Hello Nidorinars and Nidorinos, it is King Nido here and we are finally kicking off the Victory Road series and I am so excited for this, it has taken a long time to get here and we are starting it off with the Motorstoke engines hosting the Akala Captures and this is the first game of the Leaders Trials in week 1 and whoever loses will be eliminated so let us know in the comments below who you think will win, will it be the fire types, will it be the rock types, let's go! In this rematch from round three, that's right, all the way back in round three, the Motorstoke engines dominated that contest as it will be Avalok and Colossal starting out for the Akala Captures. It is Iron Moth and Cerule starting out for the Motorstoke engines and immediately a double team from Iron Moth. It is going to boost its evasiveness, a great start because if you cannot hit it, you cannot eliminate it. And then we get the follow-up confusion on the Avalok from Cerulege does get a good hit as Avalok is very physical and immediately goes for the U-turn but Iron Moth is able to avoid that attack with that boosted evasiveness and Colossal follows it up with the Gust on a Cerulege does a little bit of chip damage but Iron Moth is going to respond with the Bullet Seed here on a Colossal trying to capitalize on that Heart Rock Typing but the Heart Typing of Colossal prevents it from being super effective and you think Iron Moth would know better it is on the Fire Type side team as this multi-hit move gets its fourth connection and it is going to try and, sorry, it gets its fifth connection, so it will be successful in being a five-time hit, and it's followed out by the lash out from Cerulege on a course, while Avalog is going to go with the Milk Drink, it is going to restore that health that was taken from it in the previous turn, now this is a Hisuian Avalog as well, and it is Colossal now going for the Thrash, but it goes for Cerulege, which will not affect it, because Cerulege is a part Ghost type, and this allows Iron Moth to go with the Memento. And it is going to take itself out of this matchup. It is going to lower that attack, that of Colossal, as well as that special attack a great deal. And Colossal uh, is much more of a physically defensive Pokemon, having 80 base across those attack stats. And the Judgment follow-up on the Colossal is not very effective there from Cerulege. Avalog now with the clear smog going for Cerulege, whilst it is by itself, it is here with that not very effective move, and all stat changes do get eliminated, which is great for Colossal, who goes with the Rock Throw. This will be super effective, but Cerulege is actually able to tank that move much more than I would have expected, but that weak arm reality does get activated, boosting Cerulege's speed, but it's already quickest on the field, does lower its defense, and it is Reverend the Terrastal Pokemon now coming out for the Motorstoke engines, so already we are seeing it take on this very impressive form early on in this best of three matchup that is right remember every matchup in the victory road series is best of three and Cerulege with that speed advantage goes for the false swipe on Colossal not very effective and that is not a shiny Colossal River Room is going to follow it up with the Tailwind and again the motorcycle engines are already the quicker side they do not need those speed boosts Avalog though is going to go with the Akkering a very smart early play here in this matchup surrounding itself with that Veil of Water and Colossal is going to follow up by setting up the grassy terrain so everybody who has taken damage and has their feet planted on the ground is going to have their health restored whilst that grassy terrain is in effect and there you see it taking effect already starting to restore the health of some of the Pokemon as Cerulege now is going to go for the Boom Burst hitting everybody on the field not very effective on the rock types it looks like River Room might have actually taken the most damage and it is going to go for the Sky attacks so River Room becoming cloaked in that harsh light those wings take a flight up into the sky and Avalok goes with the pound gets a really good hit there on the River Room and Colossal follows it up with a tail wind of their own but I do not think it'll be enough to help the Akala capsules move faster than the Motorstoke engines and as I mentioned earlier the Motorstoke engines dominated the Akala capsules the last time they met it was a one to six game that took place in Akala and the fire types did walk out of that matchup dominating Typhlosion eliminating four of the Akala capsules in that matchup as the Electro Whip on the Colossal and Avalok from Cerulege is going to lower that speed of both rock type Pokemon again they are already much slower but there's the Sky Attack from River Room onto Avalog, not very effective, it tanks that move and Avalog is going to respond with a boom burst of its own but it will not affect Cerulege, however it does hit Colossal, it's teammate and River Room getting hit with a boom burst yet again as the Sunny Day is set up by Colossal, that sunlight does turn harsh over the field and it looks like a disco ball pretty much taking effect over the battlefield here. And we have everyone still having their health restored whilst that grass train is still in play. Imagine if somebody goes for a solar beam or a solar blade right now with that harsh sunlight and the grassy train in effect. That would be very impressive as that leech life 
is not very effective on Colossal, but it will restore a little bit of health to Cerulege there. And Colossal having its energy drained is in knockout range as Reverend with the Chloroblast is going to eliminate Avalog from this matchup with that super effective hit, but there will be some massive recoil damage for the Terrastal Pokemon taking Reverend out of this matchup, immediately giving the lead back to the Akala Captures, but that may be a crucial elimination, getting that heavily offensive Avalog out of this field, and there is the Sun even taking more power now, as the Sleep Powder from Colossal on Astrology is going to put the Fire Ghost type to sleep, which is a fantastic play, because whoever comes out for the Motorstoke engines now will be in having to do the heavy lifting all by itself, and very heavy lifting when it comes to having to move the Akala Capsules, that Tailwind does peter out, as out comes Spiritomb for the Capsules, and it is going to be Cinderace for the Motorstoke engines, as that pressure ability is being exerted by Spiritomb, and it will take on the Terrastal form of the capsules now, but that Cinderace will have that Libero ability because the motorcycle engines in game one do have their hidden abilities. The sides will switch their hidden abilities. We will still be in Motorstoke City though when we go into game two, but Cerulege for the time being is still fast asleep. Cinderace has to do the work all by itself. It is gonna go for the triple dive though, so it's gonna take on that water type in a fantastic play. It hits that first connection. On to Spiritum, does the water type Cinderace, gets the second connection, and it is going to finish off this triple dive here onto the Terrastalized Spiritum with that super effective move. And Spiritum going for its first move of the matchup goes with the X Scissor on the Sleep in Cerulege. It is not very effective, and there is that weak armor yet again being activated, so Cerulege's defense does get dropped for the second time in this matchup. Does get another speed boost as Colossal with the Spark now onto Cerulege. Again, activating that weak armor. They are trying to get that defense of Cerulege lowered so they can go for an easy elimination, but there is that health being restored by the Grassy Terrain and Spiritomb already grateful for that Grassy Terrain being in effect as the Tailwind now for the color Capsules Peters out. And the Grassy Terrain has finally disappeared from the field and Cerulege has awoken and it is immediately gonna go with the Blaze kick, but Colossal is able to avoid that attack, Cinderace needs to do its part now, and it goes with the Sludge Bomb, continuing to go for Spiritomb, not very effective there, on the Terrastal Pokemon though, and this allows Spiritomb to respond with the Cotton Guard, so it is going to give itself a great defense boost here, and Colossal doing its part, goes with the Play Rough now on the Cerulege, not very effective, and yet again that weak armor ability is activated. Those physical defenses of Cerulege keep getting lowered that are usually at base 80 as it goes with the Dazzling Gloom, hitting both Colossal and Spiritomb, putting them both in knockout range, even getting the critical hit on Colossal, although it was not very effective. And now the Draco Meteor onto Spiritomb, and Spiritomb is eliminated from this matchup. Cinderace lowering its special attack a great deal in the process, but the playing field has been leveled in this first match. Both Terrastal Pokemon have been taken out of this match now as Colossal is going to go with the Heal Bell, but that is going to fail even after the Bell Chimes. If there is no one on its side at the moment for that Bell to chime for as the Hush Shunt Sunlight does finally fade, and now out comes Tyranitar onto the side of the Akala Capsules and immediately kicking up that Sandstorm with that Sandstream ability. And that Dark Void from Cerulege cannot work as that nightmarish force does stop that from occurring now we get the poison powder onto colossal from that water type cinderace and you have to think that poisoning will surely take colossal out at the end of this turn but first tyranitar is going to go with the coil it's going to boost those physical stats including that 134 base attack don't shy away though from the 110 base defense as it also boosts the accuracy in the process and colossal now with the icicle crash on a syringe and Cerulege is actually eliminated with that critical hit, a fantastic move there by Colossal to take out the Fire Ghost type as that poisoning is surely going to take out Colossal, but first Cinderace will be taking some damage from that Sandstorm, and Colossal is taken out of this matchup. It is now a 3 versus 3 contest. The Akala Captures are actually holding their own against the Motorstock Engines this time, although they do have the type advantage as out comes Lycanroc for the Akala Captures, and Houndoom with that Unnerve ability comes out for the Motorstock Engines. Cinderace is immediately going to go for the super effective Lion Whip, getting great damage there onto Lycanroc. Lycanroc is going to respond there with the Ice Fang onto the Water Type Cinderace, so it's not very effective there. And now Houndoom is going to go with the double hit. Going for Lycanroc, they know that Lycanroc got the only elimination last time for their color captures as that not very effective hit does connect two times and Tyranitar is going to go with the Thunder Wave onto the Water type Cinderace. It is going to leave it paralyzed which is going to slow it down but may also make it unable to move as Houndoom does take some damage from that Sandstorm and the same thing is going to happen to Cinderace as well. 
and Lycan Rock now being the quickest on the field. Goes with the Mortal Spin, connecting with both Cinderace and Houndoom. And now Houndoom is the Pokemon on the field with that Poison status condition. Two status conditions now for the Motorcycle Engines as the Leech Seed from Houndoom onto the pseudo legendary so it is going to sap its health in between turns as Tyranitar has been seeded and Tyranitar sets up the Misty Terrain trying to weaken any Dragon type moves that we may see might have been great when that Draco Meteor took effect earlier and now Cinderace with the Quiver Dance on the field so it is going to boost its special attack that was lowered earlier from that Draco Meteor as well as boosting that special defense and that already impressive speed that it has in Houndoom is going to be hit by that Sandstorm now, Cinderace, although it's boosted its speed, it is currently the slowest on the field, but we'll see if it can move quicker than Tyranitar. As that Leech Seed takes effect, sapping the health of Tyranitar, giving that health to Houndoom, that is also taking damage from that poisoning, not just the Sandstorm. Now, Lycanroc still the quickest on the field with the Tail Slap there on the Cinderace. Get it, get a good hit in there with the first one, gets a good hit with the second, goes for the third. Cinderace is holding on and it does connect three times, so Cinderace is still in this matchup. As Houndoom is going to go with the Mountain Gale, but Tyranitar is able to actually get out of the way of that attack, and Cinderace is going to go with the Smoke Screen, lowering the accuracy here of Tyranitar. If it cannot connect with the Motorcycle Engines, it won't get any eliminations as it does now go for the Fire Pledge, and it does connect with Cinderace, and it wasn't very effective on the water type, but effective enough to get that elimination. And there is Houndoom taking the effects of that Sandstorm, but it does also get that health from Tyranus, Tyranitar still, and then that health that does get restored, it loses due to the poisoning. It does get just a little bit more health than what it loses though from that poison. As out comes Typhlosion for the Motorstoke engines, and now we get the Meteor Beam being set up by Lycan Rocket does begin to overflow with that space power and it will get a special attack boost here. Typhlosion, who dominated the Akala Captures last time, goes with the Body Slam onto Tyranitar. Tyranitar tanks that not very effective move and Houndoom looking to follow it up. Goes with the Toxic here, but due to that protective mist on the field, Tyranitar has nothing to worry about and it goes with the Cosmic Power. So it is going to boost that defense yet again as well as boosting that special defense. It's base 100 and the Sandstorm has finally subsided on the field. But that Leech Seed is not going anywhere. Tyranitar is continuing to have its health sapped. But again, Houndoom still feeling the effects of that poisoning as the Akala Capsules actually have the 3 2 advantage. And remember that type of advantage. But now the Meteor Beam from Lycanroc onto Houndoom, and that super effective hit takes Houndoom out of this matchup, and Typhlosion is all by itself, it is going to go with the eruption, this is going to hit both Lycanroc and Tyranitar, taking Lycanroc out of this matchup, Typhlosion knows what it has to do to eliminate the rock types, but now we get the belly drum from Tyranitar, however, it does not have enough health left to perform that move, and it is going to be joined by Iron Thorns, who knows how to handle a belly drum, and the head smash now onto Tyranitar. As we get our first time winning of this matchup, Typhlosion does get a little bit of recoil damage here. And Iron Thorns goes for his first move of the matchup, goes with the Endeavor. Unfortunately, it will not work. And Tyranitar with the heal pulse. I don't know what it is thinking helping out Typhlosion here. It is going to resort back to full strength. Maybe Tyranitar is looking for a challenge. But Typhlosion is going to go with the Tailwind. We've seen this already performed, but Typhlosion is already the quickest on the field. It doesn't need anything boosting or doubling its speed. But the Sludge Bomb from Iron Thorns gets a good hit there onto Typhlosion. And Tyranitar is going to follow it up with the Power Gem. And that super effective hit is going to give game one to the Akala. Captures the Motorstoke Engines. Lose the first game to the 12th place seeded Akala Captures. But on a field reset now, the Motorstoke Engines will be starting out with Arcanine and Charizard. It is going to be Arcanine and Dreadnought starting out for the Akala Captures. That is the Hesuian Arcanine on the side of the Akala Captures. Having its attacks that lowered from its fellow Arcanine's Intimidate ability. I'll try not to get too confused with the two Arcanine, sorry, on the field as the Sand Attack on a Hesuian Arcanine does have its accuracy lowered by Charizard there. And the Cantonian Arcanine going with the False Swipe is not very effective on Dreadnought. The Hesuian Arcanine with the Double Kick is not going to be effective, very effective on Charizard. I had him already getting so confused, but these two Arcanines on the field, surely one of these Fiery Puppets will have to take the other one out to make my job and life a lot easier. As the Lunar Dance from Dreadnought. Dreadnought is going to take itself out of this matchup on the first turn. That is not how the Akala Captures need to start this one off, and it will be Garganaku coming out now for the Akala Captures as the Acid Spray from Charizard continuing to go for the Hisuian Arcanine, but that not very effective move, but does lower its special defense a great deal though, 
And the Cantonian Arcanine with the glare onto its fellow Fiery Papa is going to leave the rock type Arcanine Paralyzed. So this is going to slow it down and may make it unable to move as it responds with the Matcha Gotcha. And that will not be very effective on both fire types there, but Arcanine does have the tiniest bit of health restored in the process. It should actually get itself back to full strength and that it does as it is still in a paralyzed state. Garganacle is going to go for the draining kiss onto the Can Cantonian Arcanine, which is not very effective in Charizard. With the liquidation, this is going to be super effective and it is a one hit wonder. The Hisuian Arcanine is taken out of this matchup and the acid spray follow up from the remaining Arcanine. My job just got so much better. On to Garganacle, who responds with the mortal spin onto both Arcanine and Charizard, and it is going to leave Arcanine poisoned here. And now when I say Arcanine, it is the Cantonian version as Charizard also will be left with that poison status condition and immediately starts to feel the effects of that poisoning as will Arcanine on the field. But the motorcycle engines out to an early lead as the Akala Capsules have already lost two Pokemon here. And out comes Avalug now for the Akala Capsules as the Misty Terrain is set up yet again here in Motorstoke City, this time being set up by Charizard. Arcanine going to follow it up with the Ember here onto Garganacle who tanks that move and this allows Avalog to go with the Morning Sun but it is already at full strength so it does not need to have any health restored and it will not work. Garganacle though is going to go with the Volt Tackle here onto Charizard and Charizard is eliminated by that super effective move. The Akali Capsules get one on the board capitalizing on that part flying typing of the Cantonian Fire start as Garganacle does get a little bit of recoil damage and Arcanine continuing to feel the effects of that poisoning. It is going to be joined now by Salazzle, the part poison type coming out onto the field immediately with that sweet scent having the speed advantage. It is going to lower the evasiveness of the rock types on the field. And the payback follow-up from Arcanine onto Gargana gets an okay hit, but Avalog is going to go with the Milk Drink and continuing to try and restore its health when it's at full strength. Gargana though, doing its part, goes with the Skitter Smack here onto Slazzle, which is not very effective. Slazzle tanks that move, however, its special attack does get lowered, and there is Arcanine feeling the effects of that poisoning still. Now remember that 111 base special attack of Salazzle who goes with the close combat. This would be super effective on Garganacle who's able to hold on and is in knockout range and Salazzle has lowered its defense and special defense in the process. Arcanine though could go for the one-two combination going with the darkest Lariat on the Garganacle and Garganacle is eliminated from this matchup. Avalog looking to respond though, Gold goes with the Scold on the Slazzle, massive super effective hit, Slazzle able to hold on though, it is in knockout range and Arcanine getting ever so close to being eliminated thanks to that poison as it outcomes Iron Dawns now for the Akala captures. And the power trick now from Slazzle, it is going to switch its attack and defense, Arcanine follows it up here with the Ice Fang welcoming Iron Thorns to the field, gets some chip damage in there and Iron Thorns is going to respond with the Psycho Cut, taking Arcanine out of this matchup, the color Capsules are still in it, the 4-2 advantage to the most like engines as the Rock Tomb is going to eliminate Salazzle with that super effective move and complete the huge play, it is a level playing field as the outcomes Typhlosion for the motorcycle engines and it is going to be joined by Reverum who's about to take on that Terrastal form for the second time in game one of the Victory Road series. Reverum is normally a poison steel type but taking on this fantastic fiery form see if it can do its part for the motorcycle engines but first Typhlosion with the Mac Punch onto Iron Thorns a very quick jab there super effective a critical hit as well and Reverum looking to follow it up is going to go with the lick onto Iron Thorns. I'm not so sure that Iron Thorns would taste very good though as Iron Thorns responds with the Recycle but unfortunately that does fail. Avalog is going to go with the Torch so this won't be very effective. It will get a special attack boost but Typhlosion is able to tank that move and will look to respond as the Misty Terrain has disappeared from the field. Typhlosion with the Stone Edge here on Avalog. Super effective hit there on Avalog. Great connection. Reverend follows it up with the Freeze Dry. That's not very effective, but still gets some good damage in there as the Sand Attack from Iron Thorns. Looking to lower that accuracy here of River Room on the field. Avalog with its opportunity goes with the Worry Seed, giving River Room something to worry about that'll keep it up all night long. Giving it that Insomnia ability, taking away that Overcoat ability that it normally does have. And Typhlosion with the Sleep Powder. Speaking of Pokemon going to sleep, Avalog is put to sleep on the field 
Iron Thorns is going to have to do all the hard work at the moment as Reverend with the mist it is going to shroud the most stoke engines in that mist as Iron Thorns does look to go for the clanging scales hitting both Reverend and Typhlosion gets a good hit in there but does lower its defense in the process as Avlog is fast asleep so it's not going to be able to do anything and Typhlosion could capitalize here as it goes with the lock on focusing in on the sleeping Pokemon here see if it goes for a one hit KO move potentially as Reverend with the infernal parade on the Avalog and that will take Avalok out of this matchup, that lock-on does not matter, but Iron Thorns by itself at the moment, with the curse, it is going to lower its speed here, but it is going to boost that attack, which is the same as Tyranitar's 134 base, also boosting the defense, and out comes Spiritum for the Akala Capsules, another Terrastal Pokemon on the field, and I remember the last time I saw Spiritum on the field with Iron Thorns, it did not end well for Iron Thorns, let's hope that they can avoid that here today. As the color Capsules are currently a Pokemon behind Typhlosion with the Flare Blitz here. On to Spiritomb, not very effective, does get a good hit, but Typhlosion will get a tiny bit of recoil damage. And Reverend is going to follow it up with the Growth, so it is going to boost those physical stats, uh, sorry, those offensive stats, both the attack and special attack Iron Thorns. So with the agility, it's going to boost that speed that it just lowered in the previous turn. See if it moves faster than Reverum as Spiritomb is going to go with the Flower Trick and this will always be a critical hit but Typhlosion does withstand that not very effective move. And Iron Thorns is actually now the quickest on the field going with the Aqua Step on the Reverum and it gets this super effective elimination. Iron Thorns boosts its speed yet again as it's already the quickest on the field, but it's also leveled the playing field. It's two versus two, and the Motorstock engines cannot afford to lose this game. They're coming in fifth seeded place. They do not want to lose to the 12th seeded Akala Capsules here. As the evasiveness of the Rock types does get lowered, and Spiritomb with the Water Pledge on the Typhlosion, super effective, and the Motorstock engines have just lost the lead. They've got one Pokemon remaining, and it is Hounder who comes out for the Motorstock engines. Iron Thorns, though, with the Speed Advantage, immediately greets it with a Thunderbolt. Gets a great hit there, but Houndoom is going to respond with the Focus Energy, and what a critical time to be going and getting pumped here as Spiritomb is going to go with the Self Destruct. It's going to take itself out of this matchup, but Iron Thorns is able to hold on. Houndoom is eliminated. The Akala Capsules have actually won this series 2 and 0. The Motorstock Engines have been eliminated from the Victory Road series. They have lost the first game of the Leader's Trials. The Akala Capsules impressively get the victory. They'll be moving on to Week 2 of the Victory Road series to face either the Water-type Pastoria Cascade or the ground type Pony Timbers. I did not see that upset coming from the Akala Capsules, but as you may be wondering, how will this continue? How will we go into a game three? It is because now it will just be an exhibition game. However, that will conclude. What was at stake? And the fire types have already been eliminated from the series as now out comes the Hisuian Arcanine and Dreadnought yet again for the Akala Capsules. It will be the Cantonian Arcanine and Salazzle staying out for the Motorstoke engines as they take back their hidden abilities. So it will be Arcanine, the Hisuian form intimidating its fellow Cantonian Arcanine. And Salazzle with the sand attack onto Dreadnought. Now remember, this is just an exhibition game as the Cantonian Arcanine is going to go with the struggle bug going for both Dreadnought and its fellow Arcanine. Not very effective there though, as it does have its special attack lowered do both Rock-type Pokemon. And now the Hisuian Arcanine with the Outrage, trying to show that it is the more impressive Arcanine. Gets a great hit there onto Slazzle, and Dreadnought is going to follow it up with the Pedal Dance. This will not be very effective, however, on the Cantonian Arcanine. And Slazzle so allows you to go with the Peck, which is not very effective on the Rock-type Arcanine. And yet again, I'll be getting confused with the two Arcanines on the field as the Metal Claw from Arcanine to Arcanine who responds the Rock-Type Arcanine with the Outrage onto the Cantonian Arcanine, gets a great hit and the Pedal Dance follow up from Dreadnought on the Salazzle, who heavily withstands that move. And so there's Salazzle to go with the Sludge. Not very effective, but still gets a good hit there on the Hisuian Arcanine. Cantonian Arcanine though with the Water Spout, hits both Dreadnought and eliminates the Hisuian Arcanine 
from this matchup with that critical hit, trying to say that even though they are out of contention, that it is the better Arcanine of the two. Dreadnought continuing that pedal dance on Salazzle, and yet again Salazzle, although in knockout range, is able to withstand that hit as Dreadnought has become confused due to the fatigue, and now out comes Colossal for the Akala captures. Salazzle is going to go with the fling here. It is going to fling its Leopard Berry at Dreadnought here, who heavily tanks that, practically just catches that Leopard Berry in its mouth and proceeds to chow down on it. And Arcanine now with the Water Shuriken, this multi-hit move, surely it should have gone for Colossal. It would have been quad super effective. The critical hit on the second one gets the third hit here onto Dreadnought, only getting three connections with that move, but Dreadnought is still in a confused state. It may actually do damage to itself, but it is able to shake it off as it goes with the Razor Shell on the Salazzle and eliminates the Fire Poison type from this matchup, immediately leveling the playing field in this exhibition game. Colossal with the main look now onto Arcanine. So Arcanine can no longer escape, but unfortunately for it, it is out of contention as out comes Charizard and immediately with the head smash, super effective hit there on a Colossal, fantastic hit, but Charizard does get the recoil damage and Arcanine looking to follow it up with the dig, so it is going to bury its way under the ground. And Dreadnought is still in a confused state here on the field, and yet again it is able to shake it off as it goes with the Milk Drink, getting some much needed health restored here on the field. Almost getting itself back to full strength in the process, but not quite as Colossal looking to do its part. Is going to go with the Absorb, but goes for Arcanine, who's still underground. And now Charizard is going to go with the Expanding Force onto Dreadnought. Gets a great hit there on the Water on the water Rock type, sorry, as the Dig will finish Colossal off in this matchup. And the Motorcycle Engines have taken back the lead. Dreadnought has finally snapped out of its confusion as it is going to go with the tea time it is taking its leisurely time in this matchup to chow down into its left berry with the fire types and whilst that is happening if you are enjoying what you are seeing here please leave a like share subscribe help this series grow for many seasons to come as we look to continue the poker type league into season two now out comes like and rock for the color capsules as that take heart from charizard on the field, it is going to boost that special attack and that special defense. Charizard having that 109 special attack as Arcanine with the bubble beam. Yeah, it looks like it's going for Dreadnought. Dreadnought is still holding on though, and Lycanroc is going to go with the Terror Blast onto Arcanine and gets a really great hit. Arcanine is able to hold on here, but Dreadnought could follow up going with the Flash Cannon, and Arcanine withstands that hit. Not very effective, it is in knockout range and the spatial rend now from Charizard onto Lycanroc. Fantastic connection now onto the Midnight form. And now the defense curl from Arcanine, it is going to give itself a defense boost, but it is so close to being eliminated right now. And Lycanroc could capitalize, going with the pain split here, taking some of that health from Charizard, balancing them out there. And Dreadnought is going to follow it up with the substitute, but it will not work. It does not have enough health to be able to make a substitute. And this allows Charizard to go with the happy hour. I do not know why it is celebrating. They have just been knocked out of the Victory Road series. It should be the Akala Capsules in their happy hour as the fake out now from Arcanine is going to fail. And this allows Lycanroc to go with the Fire Pledge on a Charizard. Charizard withstands that move, being not very effective. And Dreadnought does look to follow it up. With the Assurance taking Arcanine out of this matchup, leveling the playing field, are the Akala Capsules going to go 3-0 against the Mosaic Engines? As Iron Moth comes out onto the field and goes with the Clanging Scales and takes out both Dreadnought and Lycanroc in a single huge play. Iron Moth does lower its defense in the process, though. And just like that, the Mosaic Engines have the 4 to advantage as that Bullet Punch from Charizard has no target to hit, so it is going to fail. And it will be Garganackle coming out for the Akala Captures, and it will be joined by Tyranitar, who kicks up that Sandstorm yet again with that Sandstorm ability. Iron Moth still with the speed advantage, goes with the green attack, not very effective there, onto Garganackle here. And Charizard is going to follow it up with the U-turn, super effective there, capitalizing on that part dark typing of the pseudo legendary and Charizard will go back to the bench, it's still in this matchup as out comes Cinderace for the motorcycle engines and Tyranitar is going to go with the fairy lock, making it so no Pokemon can run away during the next turn, but no Pokemon is running away from this matchup as they will stick it out till the end and yet again Cinderace is left paralyzed due to a thunder wave in this match. Iron Moth is taking damage from that Sandstorm for the first time, as does Cinderace, who's just come out onto the field thanks to that U-turn. 
And we got the Calm Mind now from Iron Moth, boosting those special stats, including that 140 base special attack, so if we can capitalize on that here. But first, Tyranitar with the Mystical Fire, not very effective there. Onto Iron Moth, but does lower that special attack that was just boosted. Now Cinderace finally going for a move, is going for that Mystical Power, so it is going to become a Psychic type Pokemon. Going for Garganath, Garganath does tank yet another move as Cinderace now with the special attack boost. Everybody trying to boost that special attack as the Thrash from Garganath. A great connection on the Psychic type Cinderace, and there is Iron Moth still taking the effects of that sandstorm and so will that psychic type cinderace here iron moth is going to go with the guard split averaging out those defenses with gaga knuckle here a good pokemon to try and average out your defense with and tyranitar with the harden is going to boost that 110 base defense now it can take a physical hit and the psychic type cinderace choosing doom as its destiny looking like it's choosing that doom design for Tyranitar here, Garganakal continuing to thrash about, connecting with Iron Moth, and now Garganakal is going to be left confused due to the fatigue here. And there is that Sandstorm still taking effect, but Iron Moth, even though it is in knockout range, it is still in this matchup. Iron Moth is now going to go with the Muddy Water. However, Garganakal is able to avoid that attack, but Tyranitar does take that super effective damage, and it is going to look to respond with the Tail Glow. The Tyranitar does boost that special attack, and this allows Cinderace to go with the Energy Ball, this time going for Garganackle here. Super effective hit, but Garganackle is still hanging on, but it could do damage to itself in its confused state. And that it does almost puts itself in knockout range, as it unfortunately does do damage to itself, which is always sad to see. And there is Iron Moth still hanging on after that Sandstorm. Moth is going to go with the play nice, trying to lower those physical stats of the rock type Pokemon on the field. Garganackle having its attack lowered here. And Tyranitar with the steel roller, but unfortunately that does fail. And this opens the door for Cinderace to try and capitalize as it goes with the double team here. So it is going to boost its evasiveness, making it harder for the rock types to connect with the psychic type Cinderace and Garganackle. Still in a confused state, and yet again it is unable to shake it off, doing damage to itself as that Sandstorm does finally subside on the field, and Tyranitar takes the Doom Desire attack, and it is eliminated from this matchup with that super effective move. Garganackle is all by itself. We get the Rock Polish now from Iron Moth. It is going to boost its speed a great deal. It's already cooked on the field, though, and Cinderace is going to go with the Zen Headbutt, capitalizing on its Psychic Typing. It does take out Garganackle, but unfortunately, this is the last time we're going to see the Motor Stoke engines this season, because it is the Akala Capsules moving on on to face the winner of the Pastoro Cascade and the Pony Timbers, so they will be at a type disadvantage regardless of that outcome. But until then, Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was the best on the field. And if you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, share, subscribe, but more importantly, always remember, you are awesome, and I'll see you when you see me.